the home of the common Joe and the common Sally in the know, even more so than all those media talking heads. Looks like those Nebraska Cornhuskers may have a saving grace. While it is a hard place, in my opinion, to, to uh, recruit to because of its geographical location now and with the Modern day age of today's diva type athletes, not many people want to play in those blue collar, hard weather type places. But Nebraska has a pretty important booster by the name of Warren Buffett. And it seems like Mr. Buffett is wanting to weigh in on this whole situation with the Nebraska Cornhuskers and their coaching search to try to get the Cornhuskers back to the glory days. Let's talk about it. Well, 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 how's it going out there today, boys and girls in sporty land? Once again, the theme for this week, this whole week, is going to be the 80s song that I'm going to use all week is Another One Bites the Dust by Queen because that's been the theme all year long for this coaching carousel to me that has gotten way out of hand into a massive idiotic cycle. But before we get to all that and talk about Mr. Warren Buffett, a Nebraska booster that I was not aware of. He may be an alumnus, too. I'm not sure. But before we get to all that, I am the OCF. That's the Outlaw of College Football, also known as JPC. That stands for Jesse Paul Clark on Facebook, spelt J-S-S-E without the I. Yeah, that's right. Now, getting right to it. Seems like Nebraska, like I said, they got a pretty important uh, booster. Alumnus, whatever he is to him, Warren Buffett, pretty big name, pretty big donor to the Nebraska uh, School of Medicine, I think it is, maybe their medical school or whatnot. I'm not sure about that. But he has weighed in and is told from the um, Nebraska insiders that I talked with, according to Nebraska insiders, Marquita Armstead, who is the associate AD, I think, said Mr. Buffett contacted her and offered to roll out the Brinks trucks for these three candidates. These are three guys that Mr. Buffett has obviously taken the time to look into and investigate for himself and maybe trying to throw some swagger around. Hell, he may have been responsible for the $7 million buyout and couldn't wait two weeks for the buyout to go down because we all know Mr. Buffett is, is a pretty damn rich man. $7 million is probably like me or you giving someone a dollar bill. <laughs> but these are the three candidates that Mr. Buffett supposedly said that he wanted as the next head coach in Nebraska, and he's willing to roll out the Brinks trucks to get one of these three guys. The first guy is Dave Clawson of Wake Forest. This is listed, that these three are listed, it says, in order of what he wants. So I'm going to start with his third choice, that being Dave Clawson of Wake Forest. The guy's done an exceptional job at a school where it's extremely hard to win. He's got one of the smallest budgets in college football, probably as far as athletics goes, one of the smallest stadiums in college football. And yet they continue to contend for bowl games and even somewhat for the ACC crown, at least up to the mid part of the season usually. I mean, they lost to Clemson last week, but it was an overtime game. It was a pretty well-thought game that Wake Forest maybe should have won that game. But they rebounded and bounced back and beat an undefeated Florida State school. So it's not, your, it's not, it's not our daddy's Wake Forest. <laughs> it's a pretty damn good team right now. And the job that Dave Clausen's done there 
has put him right in the crosshairs of some of these big name schools now uh, with Mr. Warren Buffett. Number two on Mr. Warren Buffett's list, Lane Kiffin of Ole Miss. We all know the connection there. Lane Kiffin was born in Lincoln, Nebraska, when his co when his dad was an assistant coach. I think it was on Tom Osborne's staff at Nebraska. So there's a little connection there. Might be something that Lane might consider. I, I had talked about this before, about Lane Kiffin possibly being a candidate, but I just didn't know if Nebraska could lure him up there because of the weather and because the the fact that it's just hard to recruit to Nebraska these days. But I didn't know that Warren Buffett was one of their boosters. <laughs> and that kind of money can make a man forget a lot of things. And I think that Warren Buffett, if he really wants Lane Kiffin and they offer Lane Kiffin enough money, Lane Kiffin will be coaching the Nebraska Cornhuskers next year. And for me, to me, Nebraska and Warren Buffett, they should go after this guy. Of these three candidates, in my opinion, they should go after him because he's not afraid. He's not afraid to take chances. He's not afraid to do something uh, to get the program noticed. Now, sometimes, albeit pretty controversial, Lane can get you in trouble sometimes. <laughs> uh, my only problem with Lane is all this um, stuff he's been doing here lately with the fourth downs. He's got this little analytical book or something or – program that he goes by that if it's fourth down in a certain situation where you normally punt or kick a field goal he'll go for it like last week when it was fourth down to four yard line instead of kicking a field goal he went for it they ended up winning that game only because Kentucky fumbled the ball twice on drives where they were about to score in the fourth quarter and so he looks out sometimes with that shit but but that's the only problem I have with Lane. Other than that, he's an out-of-the-box type thinking coach that I really like and I think he would be a great candidate for Nebraska. And the last one that he really wants, they say this is the guy he really wants at Nebraska, and that's Kyle Whittingham of Utah. And that's because Kyle Whittingham has coached in a desolate type area, albeit Salt Lake City is an actually pretty big, nice-sized town. It still ain't the mecca of college football and somewhere that you could see your recruits just flocking to. Uh, has a lot of drawbacks to it. You know, a lot of people don't like the Mormon religion. Me personally, I have no issue with the Mormon religion, but I'm just telling you there's people out there that have an issue with the Mormon religion, and it filters down to their kids, that being the recruits, and it makes it somewhat hard to recruit to Utah with the location and some of the... Uh, religious aspects of that state. That would be a big turn on for Warren Buffett because Nebraska's in the same situation. It's in a desolate type area. Weather's not that great sometimes. Um, I think it would be a really good fit if they could get Kyle to come. Now, Kyle's been at Utah for a while, so sometimes even all the money in the world don't mean anything if you think that you're going to get somewhere and possibly fail. But I think Kyle, because of where he has been coaching his entire head coaching career, knows how to win in those kind of geographical situations and those kind of um, situations that maybe affect recruiting that a lot of places don't have to deal with. Kyle Whittingham is really apt to dealing with that kind of stuff, and I think he could succeed at Nebraska. So if... Warren Buffett wants to throw that money around. I think the Brinks truck should be in Salt Lake City tomorrow or in Oxford, Mississippi tomorrow. Dave Clawson, pretty good candidate as well. But if he can get those other two, I think they could turn around Nebraska football in a hurry. And that's all I got to say about that. Like, share, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Also, if you don't mind, there's a little hard option down here. Click on that, throw a few dollars in the coffers. Also, tell me who you think Warren Buffett should throw his money at. And with that, I'm off of here. And as always, KMCA to all the other teams. Class is now officially dismissed.